Hello all and welcome to our channel. Today we'll be discussing the National Company Law Tribunal or NCLT and how it works when it comes to insolvency. Before we proceed further, like, share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the notification bell so that you get the latest updates. As a legal remedy for businesses in financial difficulties, NCLT may be familiar to you if you are a business owner or investor. The NCLT is a quasi judicial body in India that was established under the Companies Act of 2013. It was set up to consolidate and replace the Company Law Board and the Board for Industrial and Financial Reconstruction. The NCLT is tasked with handling matters related to companies and their stakeholders, including insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings. The NCLT is headquartered in New Delhi and it has 15 branches across the country, making it more accessible to litigants and stakeholders. These benches are located in major cities such as Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Hyderabad and Ahmedabad among others. The NCLT has a two-tiered structure. The first tier is the NCLT bench which is responsible for hearing cases related to companies. The second tier is the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal NCLAT which is responsible for hearing appeals against the decisions of the NCLT bench. The NCLT has several functions which include adjudicating on matters related to insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings of companies and individuals, resolving disputes between shareholders, management and other stakeholders of a company, deciding on mergers, acquisitions and other restructuring activities of companies, hearing cases related to operation and mismanagement of companies, approving schemes of arrangement and compromise between companies and and their creditors. The NCLT has played a significant role in the Indian corporate ecosystem. Its establishment has brought in several reforms, including the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, IBC, in 2016, which has streamlined the insolvency process and improved the ease of doing business in India. The IBC has provided a time-bound process for resolution of insolvency and bankruptcy in a transparent and predictable manner. The NCLT is responsible for overseeing the this process, which involves appointing an interim resolution professional, IRP, or a resolution professional, RP, inviting claims from creditors, forming a committee of creditors, COC, evaluating and approving a resolution plan, and finally liquidation if the resolution plan is not approved. In addition to insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings, the NCLT has also played a crucial role in resolving disputes related to mergers and a acquisitions, operation and mismanagement of companies, and approving schemes of arrangement and compromise between companies and their creditors. In conclusion, the NCLT is a quasi-judicial body in India that plays a crucial role in the corporate ecosystem. Its function include adjudicating on matters related to insolvency and bankruptcy proceedings, resolving disputes between stakeholders, approving schemes of arrangement and compromise, and deciding on mergers, acquisitions and other restructuring activities of companies. Its establishment has brought in several reforms, including the IBC, which has streamlined the insolvency process and improved the ease of doing business in India. So what is insolvency then? Insolvency is a legal process by which a company or an individual who is unable to repay their debts can be declared bankrupt. This means that their assets are taken over by a court-appointed trustee who then sells them off to repay the creditors. In India, insolvency is governed by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 IBC. The IBC was enacted to consolidate and amend the laws relating to insolvency and bankruptcy. It provides a time-bound process for resolution of insolvency and bankruptcy in a transparent and predictable manner. The process starts with a default. When a debtor defaults on a payment, the creditor can initiate the insolvency process by filling an application before the National Company Law Tribunal, NCLT, or 
the Debt Recovery Tribunal, DRT, depending on the nature of the debt. Once the application is filed, the NCLT or the DRT will appoint an Interim Resolution Professional, IRP, or a Resolution Professional, RP, depending on the stage of the insolvency process. The IRP slash RP will then take over the management of the company or the individual's assets and work towards resolving the insolvency. The IRP slash RP will then invite claims from all creditors and create a list of creditors. Based on this list, a committee of creditors, COC, is formed. The COC will then evaluate and approve a resolution plan. The resolution plan must be approved by at least 75% of the voting share of the COC. If the resolution plan is approved, it is then submitted to the NCLT for approval. If the NCLT approves the resolution plan, it becomes binding on all parties involved. If the resolution plan is not approved, the NCLT may order liquidation of the company or individual's assets. In case of liquidation, the assets are sold off to repay the creditors in a specific order of priority. Secured creditors are paid first, followed by unsecured creditors and then the operational creditors. It's important to note that the NCLT process can be a lengthy and complex one and it's crucial to have legal experts and financial advice throughout the process. In conclusion, the NCLT is a specialized court that deals with matters related to corporate insolvency and bankruptcy. If you're a business owner facing financial distress or a creditor seeking to recover your dues, the NCLT could be a legal recourse for you. It's important to have expert advice throughout the process to ensure the best possible outcome. Now let's study some of the key case laws in NCLT which helped in shaping the landscape of insolvency resolution. In 2020, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, IBC in India, saw significant developments through judicial pronouncements. These cases played a crucial role in clarifying the legislative intent and interpretation of the IBC. Let's dive into five landmark insolvency cases of 2020 and their key highlights and implications. Case number one, Anud Jain Interim Resolution Professional for JP Infratech Limited versus Access Bank Limited. This case addressed two main issues. First, it discussed whether certain transactions were avoidable under the IBC. The Supreme Court provided clarity on the requirements for a transaction to be considered preferential, undervalued or fraudulent. Second, it examined whether creditors of a holding company could be treated as financial creditors of the subsidiary. The court concluded that a direct nexus between the corporate debtor and the holding company's lenders was lacking, impacting their classification as financial creditors. Case 2 2. Anshul Vashisht versus J. Hind Steel Traders and ANR. Under Section 9 of the IBC, an operational creditor can initiate insolvency proceedings against a corporate debtor after delivering a demand notice. In this case, the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, NCLAT, emphasized that the objective of the IBC is to maximize the value of the corporate debtor's assets, not solely to recover money. The NCLAT ruled that if a genuine dispute exists, the provisions of the IBC cannot be invoked. Case 3. E.C. John versus Jitendra Kumar Jain. The case dealt with the jurisdiction of civil courts in matters falling under the purview of the IBC. Section 60 of the IBC designates the National Company Law Tribunal as the adjudicating authority for corporate insolvency proceedings. The NCLAT held that no suit or proceedings proceeding can be initiated in a civil court when the NCLT has jurisdiction. Additionally, emphasized that the NCLT should not quash proceedings pending before a civil court, but rather inform the court about the relevant provisions of the IBC. In this video, we bring you some interesting statistics about insolvency cases in India. The National Company Law Tribunal on October 22 has disposed of a massive amount of insolvency cases, totaling around 10.5 lakh crore rupees, excluding liquidation and certain other matters. According to Chief Justice, retired Ramalingam Sudhakar, the president of NCLT, a staggering 25,225 cases involving a total amount of rupees 10,49,264 crores have been resolved under sections 7, 9 and 10 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Out of this, a remarkable 23,600 
108 cases involving rupees 7 lakh 21282 crore were settled before admission additionally 565 cases with an amount of rupees 3 lakh 3381 crore saw the approval of resolution plans these numbers represent the period from november 2017 to august 2022 it's important to note that these figures pertain to cases filed by financial and operational creditors as well as voluntary cases for resolution under the IBC the amounts realized through other sections of the IBC such as during liquidation are not included the NCLT and the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india IBBI have been working diligently to reduce delays in the resolution process these efforts aim to streamline the insolvency the proceedings and ensure timely outcomes while these statistics highlight the substantial progress made in resolving insolvency cases it's worth mentioning that the data is subject to modification as per the nclt website also the delhi bench of the national company law tribunal is set to announce its verdict on go first's petition on 10th of may 2023 for initiating voluntary insolvency proceedings and imposing an interim moratorium the court had reserved its order after hearing the arguments go first had filed for insolvency voluntarily at the nclt on 2nd of may following the suspension of its flights for a few days however during the proceedings the court expressed reservations about granting the requested relief under the ibc as it found no specific provision empowering them to do so on july 2022 the supreme court has made a significant ruling in the case of vidarbha industries par limited versus access bank it has determined that the national company law tribunal cannot accept a bankruptcy petition filed by a financial creditor solely based on the presence of a financial debt and the corporate debtor's failure to repay it instead the nclt must take into account any additional arguments raised by the corporate debtor before deciding on the admission of the petition this decision by the nclt will have significant implications for the go first and its future stay tuned for updates on the outcome of the NCLT's verdict and its impact on the airline's insolvency proceedings. In conclusion, the National Company Law Tribunal has emerged as a game changer in resolving insolvency cases. With its robust framework and dedicated approach, the NCLT has become the go-to platform for companies facing financial distress. Through its streamlined processes and expert panels, it ensures fair and efficient resolution of insolvency cases, providing a ray of hope for both debtors and creditors the nclt has successfully brought about a paradigm shift in the insolvency landscape offering a structured and time bound approach to deal with distressed companies it has not only safeguarded the interests of the creditors but also facilitated the revival and rehabilitation of businesses fostering a more dynamic and resilient economy in the realm of insolvency cases the nclt has emerged as a beacon of hope providing a level playing field for all parties involved its role in restructuring and reviving struggling businesses has undoubtedly transformed the landscape of corporate insolvency by enabling the recovery of distressed assets and minimizing losses it has not only protected the interests of creditors but also contributed to the overall growth and stability of the economy so whether you are a business owner a creditor or an investor understanding the dynamics of the nclt and its impact on insolvency cases is crucial by keeping a close eye on its decisions and proceedings you can stay informed about the latest developments and leverage its mechanisms to your advantage remember knowledge is power and staying updated on the nclt's role in insolvency cases will empower you to make informed decisions protect your interests and navigate the intricate world of corporate insolvency before you go don't forget to check out our other amazing video on NCLT and if you enjoyed this video and found it valuable be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any future uploads we are constantly bringing you captivating content that will broaden your horizons and keep you engaged thank you for watching